Welcome, my name is Terry Sarantu, and I'm a surgical oncologist at the Levine Cancer Institute. Opioids, also known as narcotics, were the best way to manage persistent or severe pain for many years. But we all realize there's been a cloud over opioid use, and many uh, feel that we're practicing in somewhat of a callous kind of nature, and we need to move more towards compassion. We'll review some additional strategies to manage pain, and a lot of this is based on education, and this is really what a lot of the format of the video is. Are there really people that need narcotics on a chronic basis? And really, are there biases that patients experience when they think about opioid use, as well as prescribers? And again, review patient education tools that the Levine Cancer Institute has, as well as other uh, organizations, such as the American College of Surgeons. Opioids are very powerful pain relievers. You need a prescription in order to get an opioid. And basically, we look at the use of opioids as more of a short-term strategy, but there are some patients that require them for longer terms. Opioids block pain signals in the brain, in the spinal cord, in the gut, and other parts of the body. But, as many patients experience, there are side effects. And those side effects are nausea. And many patients think when they develop nausea, they actually have an allergy to opioids, but that's not necessarily true. Another side effect can be vomiting, constipation, urinary retention or difficulty in going to the bathroom, drowsiness, impaired thinking skills, and altered breathing. When we think of an opioid exposure, we think of three different tiers of exposure. Most patients are exposed to opioid. They're opioid naive. They've never had opioids before. Usually those experiences are as a result of surgery, perhaps trauma, a diagnosis of cancer, or a dental procedure. A small percentage of patients that take opioids in this fashion will actually become dependent or addicted. It's estimated that there are some patients that just with one dose of opioids could become addicted. A second tier is opioid dependence. These are the patients that take opioids for a longer period of time because it's necessary, say, for a particular procedure or a particular trauma. What we face in these types of patients are challenges with discontinuing their medications. We realize that when you discontinue the opioid medications, when you've been on them for a long period of time, there may be some severe side effects, which then force patients to take more opioids. So it's really upon us, as well as patients, to become educated, work with, say, a pain clinic physician, or work with your individual physicians in terms of making a plan, and also work with addiction specialists. And then the third tier are those patients that become addicted. Those patients, unfortunately, have a real problem and can be at risk for overdose and death. There are many millions of surgical procedures that are done in the U.S. every year. A study in 2012 showed of 80 million surgical procedures, about 50% of patients received an opioid prescription at discharge. Only about 27% of those patients really took those pills but again, that's a great number of opioid prescriptions that are being prescribed for some procedures that may not require them, such as a dental procedure or a small surgery. That study showed about 8% of patients were still taking opioids after one year uh, for surgeries that are classified as low risk, and about 3% were still taking them for surgeries that were classified as higher risk. We know that many patients report that after about four days of taking opioids, they no longer need them. So again, this supports writing or decreasing the number of opioids that patients are being prescribed. We have to remember that pain control is really a complex problem. It's not simple. And pain is really a subjective experience. It's really what you bring to the, uh, what you bring to the experience itself. There may be some experiences that you had in a different type of setting that really influences the emotions and part of what you feel that you're going to go through with the experience with your pain and with opioids. A pain score can be assigned to you, and it's valuable in the acute setting, but it may not be as helpful in those patients that need to take opioids for a more prolonged period of time. And we really need to challenge the pain score, or when we ask patients really about their pain, because it should be more, not, it should be more so not necessarily about a particular score, but how can patients get back to a good functioning life. And really pain is defined as an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience and this is associated with either actual or potential tissue damage or described in terms of such damage. Really what this says is, is that again, this is a sensory type subjective experience. Pain is incredibly useful until it goes bad. It's a defense mechanism that the body has to help us work through pain. 
But when we get to chronic pain, we see things in patients like anxiety, their social impact on those in the surrounding, they become socially isolated, and as their pain goes up, we notice that their function goes down. They withdraw socially from the community, they become more depressed, they become more anxious, and they become more upset. It's important that a family member, as, as well as their physicians, ensure that the patients feel that their pain is validated. Validation can really be empowering. It's not that those patients should take opioids without being monitored, but again, the family, the physicians, and the patient need to work together. Thank you for watching. We all agree that opioids are powerful medications that can help with severe pain. But we also understand that opioids put patients at severe risk for injury and harm. The information in this video should be helpful to you as you move forward in your journey. In the app, you'll find particular resources and links to these resources for future reference.